Let this video be proof that if you want me to react to something, the best thing to do is not to bug me about it. Now, for those of you who have followed my channel for a while, you know that I'm not super fond of holidays. Usually, when I say that, the response is, but you like Halloween, right? It's like the anti-holiday. Um, no, one, that's not true. Two, holiday is just the start of the, the dread your average retail and food service worker feels. How Halloween goes pretty much defines how all of the holidays following that goes. If your customers are bad during Halloween, they will only get worse as December approaches. To be honest, I'm not even one of like the fall girlies. Most of the trappings of the change of seasons, I just kind of opt out of because I'm a grumpy curmudgeon and that's why you guys are here because you love that I'm a grumpy curmudgeon. One of the things about working in the service industry is it forces forces you to become pragmatic, especially when you have to conserve your energy for specific tasks. And this increased pragmatism is in direct conflict with celebrating holidays and special occasions, especially when on your end, it requires much more work. Special occasions become against your nature, so to speak. So I decided to sort of take a step back and like try to, I don't know, rediscover what joy holidays can bring other than, you know, an extended car trip and spending a lot of time with people who are very, very loud. I am making <laughs> a legitimate effort to enjoy celebrating things again. So we're watching a Halloween movie. That's not a horror movie because when I wanted to watch a horror movie, I chickened out. Guys, Talk To Me looks like a great movie. It also looks terrifying. If memory serves, what we do in the shadows is kind of like Taika Waititi's Hereditary. It's not his first movie, but it's the first one to sort of put him into prominence. This movie is what led to him directing the Thor films and Jojo Rabbit. This movie eventually became a TV show, which is incredibly popular, essentially centering around what do immortal get up to and what matters to them most. This is not a subject that gets handled with a light touch normally. Normally it's a fucking bummer. Okay, I've had a lot of trouble getting this to work. <laughs> I've had to wrestle with a couple of different versions that were um, <clears throat> totally legit, but now I think we're good. So we're not gonna need to restart this again. I have watched the first five minutes. That shouldn't be as much of a bop as it is. Every few years, a secret society in New Zealand gathers for a special event, the Unholy Masquerade. In the months leading up to the ball, a documentary crew have, was granted full access to a small group of the society. These are their stories. This shot is an instant mood setter. Bleh. So we have the classic Dracula type. They they time sunset and sunrise these days. I realize you might be stuck in the past, but they have that now. I transformed into a dog and had sex. Cool. <laughs> the Swiffer wet jet in the background. I just saw that. Okay, so we have like the okay, okay, like the '80s year of vampire, the one that hangs upside down. That is love. Uh, we have the Toreador. Okay, so the different eras, we have the Lost Boys vampire, the one in the closet. Uh, we have, uh, the Toreador, which is, like, the picture of, uh, like, decadence, and I know they're not really- I know that's not really the Toreador, but, um, they have what I essentially like to call the Cautionary Tale vampire. And then we have the Mosferatu. So we have, like, different eras of vampire lore. I think that's pretty funny. There's a lot of stuff on the floor down here, Peter, and, like, this... <laughs> he looks a little self-conscious! <sighs> Don't tell me how to clean my room! It's my room! Quick chat about flat responsibility. Hey, they have so hobbies! Uh, vampires don't do dishes? Uh, yes, they do! Did you read Dracula? Yes, they do! He's always doing crazy things, saying crazy things. He's the Lost Boys vampire. The Anarch, if you will, the Bruja. Opened its wings like this and hovered above me, screeching. <laughs> now you are vampire. And it was Peter. <laughs> Did, like, kind of happen together? <laughs> it I mean, shouldn't be funny, funny, but it really is. Yeah. It was quite tyrannical. I was known for uh, torturing 
a lot of people. You know, we we impaled a couple thousand men on some stakes. It's all right. <laughs> I was known as Vladislav the Poker. Not Vlad the Impaler. You're vampires. We don't put down towels. Once again, incorrect. Bill put down towels. I will do my dishes. You okay there? <laughs> couldn't quite uh couldn't quite deal with the harness, could you? <laughs> Gross. Get a dishwasher. A great mood setter though. I really love that. Cuz you do kind of wonder when you live for so long, what kind of mundane shit do you get up to? That's cool and everything, but I just realized, would they be able to take photos? You know what? I think I'm splitting hairs a little too narrowly here. To hell with it. I'm going to go. I'm going to chase her and tell her how I feel. I told myself. How did it feel crossing over moving water? That's me. I put myself in there. Too. <laughs> we vampires cannot wear silver. No. All right. 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 Take it off, sweetie. Hey, at least it doesn't kill you like a werewolf. You got that. Everyone else seems to be- seems to have practiced, Viago. What about you? It is important that we look good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, like one of the unfortunate- <laughs> <laughs> That is one of my favorite tropes. You see someone, like, scribbling furiously as they're, like, they turn it around and it's, like, awful. <laughs> or if it's- or it's not what it is at all. When you're a vampire, you become very sexy. Or you just get very bad posture. I go for a look which I call dead but delicious. I was gonna say sleepy, but <laughs> in so many different eras, vampires. <laughs> Cause that's 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 exactly how it feels. The hottest night spot, huh? This isn't Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, y'all. There ain't no lacuna coil here. Perhaps a guy. One of each. One of each would be cool. Yeah, we can we we can do we can we can, we can do that. Yeah. He tells me what to do. I do it. Why couldn't he tell you to do the dishes then? Definitely younger than yourself. Oh. <laughs> well, I just feel like I've kind of reached my potential and I wouldn't want to kind of get any older before kind of... I just feel like I'm the best version of myself that I can be. I yes, just, bite me already, you bastard! I just, I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I... Okay. No, I'm, I'm about to be super pedantic here because I'm an asshole. Um, humans have so much blood in them. Why would a vampire be able to drink that much like imagine drinking four liters of soda just as i imagine it would be just as filling to drink like two liters of blood which wouldn't kill a person <laughs> that didn't go so great no um clearly she has high blood pressure the wrist man the wrist yeah how does he feed Oh, this, this, yeah, of course. Come in. Oh, no. You were the one that started calling me that, and then it, then it kind of caught on. Yeah. Okay, bye then. Oh, no, I'm kind of rooting for her a little bit. <laughs> I think of it like this. If you were going to eat a sandwich, you would just enjoy it more if you knew no one had fucked it. Virgins can still be anemic, though. No, it is just a normal penis. I'm out. Don't leave me here! <laughs> oh, you're hypnotized, hypnotized, hypnotized. You're not, you're not getting out, bud. <laughs> he can't get the faces right. That's pretty great. I'm expecting Peter to come out and, like, just eviscerate this man. But, yeah, I knew it. I feel like this is a small town. No one's noticed that people are just kind of disappearing. Like, people dying is one thing, but disappearing is quite another. This is the weirdest wide shot I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling Deacon's expression there. Hey, what are you guys doing? What are you doing, Nick? Oh! Oh! When did that happen? Oh! Oh, because of Peter. That's what he does. Get in there. Get- get- it. Somebody pull him! Pull him! Be nice! There you go. was quite similar to him the flu. <laughs> I mean, in 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 his defense, that is kind of how the flu feels. I don't, I don't know. 
if I'm being, if I'm accepted yet. No, because you don't use the front door. No, this is my friend Stu. Hi. Hey, I'm just and he's just some guy. Friends. All right, you can hear me. Oh, yeah, like computer-based stuff, eh? Mainly. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> oh, Deacon's starting to feel a little put out because he's no longer the new hotness. No, he loves you guys, I promise! Some of these people did not know that they would be filming. <laughs> that, was, that was a look of genuine, like, what the fuck? I don't think I don't think Viago has ever been stimulated to this point. He looks confused. Yeah. Oh, you oh, guys, oh, oh. hi, Mr. Darby. <laughs> What's up? You don't have to explain what? it, bro. Okay, Just I see. I see. The spirit lives on. Werewolves. Don't get, Don't get come back here. Was well, it actually werewolf? Yeah. Are you okay, Stu? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was so. <laughs> His look of what the fuck? Uh, what? I'm expecting him to be angry. He might be scared. I'm expecting a lot of things to, to bubble to the surface. I don't know. He might be into that. Maybe he likes playing Asterian. Who knows? <laughs> Stu just looks worried. To kill him, but now. I'm glad I spent the time to get to know him. He now, does seem unreasonably unreasonably chill. But we've all got an agreement that we're not going to eat stew. Although he clearly has high blood pressure. Use your legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh the Mortal Kombat bicycle kick. Because I know that you you turned me into a vampire. Maybe don't do that to him. He's a uh, Vegetarian. The last thing he'd want to do is eat. <laughs> hey, Peter respects his friends. He might be a predator, but he respects his friends. Our technology can go forward if you're not paying attention. And they really haven't been paying attention. Yeah. Right. Right. I had lost a really nice silk scarf in about ninety. <laughs> They're like a bunch of cats. Of <laughs> it's like they're like cats. <laughs> Yeah, but you didn't feel your end of the bargain, bud. <laughs> Bye, Phil. <laughs> I really hope Stu doesn't understand German. <laughs> oh, is that where, uh, what's her name is? Oh, but it seems he still loves her. That's cute. I do like the music in this movie. Well, I like how the music goes in with this movie. Sometimes the music is a bit difficult to listen to. It's not of my taste personally, but it does match with the movie very well. This ain't true blood. Come on now. No, you can't walk in the sun and sparkle. Uh oh. Oh, wait. Don't kill him. Stu says nothing, as usual. Oh no, I wouldn't eat that. Nope. Why? Yep, prepare to vomit a lot. Yep. All the blood you've drunk that day will, uh, exit. Happened in Vampire of the Masquerade Bloodlines. I can't eat songs now, great. But I can't sunbathe, can't watch daytime TV. I can if I- oh, yeah, I guess I could. More, more than anything, just the chips. My favorite food, I can't eat chips. Nope. And those weren't even chips. They were wontons. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you alright, Deacon? You alright, buddy? All I'm saying is that, um... You know, if I had a penis, I would have been... I would have been bitten years ago. I mean, I actually think you're right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> See you tomorrow. Okay, Deacon's about to get staked. <laughs> Come on, man. Cats Introduce yourself. Chopping his head off. There we go. Him of every drop of blood that he had, who wouldn't? But then I also saw how happy she was. Viago's kind of adorable. I did the honorable thing and I just stepped back and let her live her life. I mean, which is more than most vampires do in these kinds of stories. He does stalk her quite a bit, though. He is out literally outside her window. 
can vampires masturbate? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. The old man. Oh. Oh. Oh God. Oh. Oh. Peter's hella dead. <laughs> what happened? Why was there sunlight in the basement? I. Uh, my statement remains, how? He lives in the basement. So this is what I think happened. Oh. <laughs> then, the table leg, which is oh, that's the guy from... That's the guy from the club! <laughs> so he wasn't lying about being a vampire hunter. Twist it the other way, the other way. This, way. this guy is here. Yeah, that's the guy from the club. Oh, you fucked up, Nick. Also, how did they find the house? Oh. Okay, I admit, this is cool. Oh, you see a scene? <laughs> you want to talk about it now that you might lose. <laughs> Stu was like, I wasn't getting involved anyway. <laughs> like, um, Some loud noises, possibly a forced entry, wasn't there? Mm. And, um, and also maybe a bit of smoke coming out. Well, I mean, there was a forced entry and there was... Smoke, but it's like 12 hours later. <laughs> smells a bit weird in here too, mate. Yeah. What do you call that? Uh, patchouli. I really hope that those guys don't kill those police because it would mean more police will come, possibly even Christians, which is totally the last thing we need in this house. As interesting as this movie is, it does have some choice lines. See? What's that, Manoke? You're joking. Not a smoke alarm in sight. No smoke detectors, mate. Um, I mean, a better hypnotist can also come in. And no smoke detectors again, are they? No. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. <laughs> yeah, see? There we go. A better hypnotist. Wait, let's kill them. Well, let's just... See no! <laughs> Deacon, shut up, man! <laughs> I call into session this trial of Nick. Of Wellington. It, it's not it's not as it's not as climactic as it is in the underworld series, is it? <laughs> there's there's not a lot of black leather and guns. You brought a human into our house, which is a big no no in the vampire Stu's, world. Stu's okay, though. Yeah, so Stu's fine, so we'll guess we'll just cross that one out. But you did uh, kill Peter though. You killed your sire, man. Wait, shouldn't all of them be dead if the if the sire's dead well no, that's not how it works. That's that's right. We're thinking of the wrong mythos here. For these crimes of which we, the Vampire Council, find you guilty. Including crimes of fashion. Fled. Indefinitely. 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 So I can come back. No! <laughs> Indefinitely. You are banished. That's it. But Stu, you can visit if you like. Thank you. <laughs> Let us do the procession of shame. Now. Shame. 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 Seriously, is in your DMs. Cr screaming and crying. I think that was Cersei anyway. I don't know anything about Game of Thrones. I shouldn't be making references to shows I don't know. I, I deadass thought they were about to play the sad Hulk music. They couldn't give my girl a power washer or anything. I mean, Nick could have upgraded her. Damn. Dearly departed. <laughs> Dear Manda, that's me. I hope she's doing okay. Invite you to attend the unholy masquerade on the night of the sixth of June. Okay, that does not make sense. Why would it be in the middle of summer at six p.m. when it gets dark? It's oh, the sixth. Okay, six six. Okay, that makes sense. Why do I feel like that was just a picture of Taika Waititi at Halloween? I heard a little rumor that the guest of honor this year. Why? Who is it? Show me. Oh, he's not happy. We should pray that you never have to see the beast. <laughs> Stu's just like, all right. Oh, I fought the beast in a swamp. Ooh. Oh, oh and then one time I fought the beast in the toilets of a night. I mean, we've all fought in the bathroom of a nightclub. Come on. Yeah, but vampires love Wesley Snipes. So it's no, it's inappropriate. It is inappropriate. Oh God. <laughs> Just leave me to do my dark bidding on the internet. What are you bidding on? I'm bidding on the, the table. table. <laughs> Have a good time. Oh, Vlad. Buddy. The Cathedral of Despair. 
Oh, you know, I just remembered. It's New Zealand. Of course it's fucking... It's not in the middle of summer. I'm an idiot. Let's go. Guys, 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 guys. You have to... We don't have brains here. We have, like, the simulated stuff. I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah. So, um, who bit you? Oh, Nick. Pretty rude because she was my... Yeah, but you weren't fulfilling your end of the bargain. Oh, he's here. Joe. It's Joe. Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey. I'm sorry, Stu's my favorite character. He's just there. I love him. Hey, at least Stu's not on the menu, right? He's just that cool. Ah. Uh, the beast. <laughs> Bloody chocolate fountain. Sorry, that is funny. I like how Stu is just that cool. What, what kind of vampire he is, if he is a vampire? I don't know, maybe he's a bruja? No, he's not a demon. I'm a software analyst. Which is akin to a demon. Uh-oh. Do, do you, would you like to, you know, donate your brain to my, um, stomach? Save. Yeah, yeah, but save him. He senses that Stu is dead inside and must feed. Yeah, so go, go, go get him. Okay, y'all can fly. <laughs> no, save Stu! I, saw, I, heard the, I heard the accent slip. Everybody heard that girl. He doesn't like public speaking. He's under pressure. Leave him alone. Basically, we take like business requirements from organizations and we um, analyze those requirements and then we build software. He works for Salesforce. Nope. Oh, is that Vlad? <laughs> oh my God, Vlad? Georgie? No, I'm not. Oh. George. Oh. Did it help him? Help him untie no, the. Let's go. Let's th thank, you. Th th thank you. Thank <laughs> you. This is my ex boyfriend. Yes. You know, the one who fucked that week. All right, that's old business. That's personal. Yeah, but personal? You're coming up here ruining my fun! You will not eat stew and you will not eat the camera right. guy. Maybe I'm one camera guy. guy <laughs> no, no, no thanks. Oh, there's nothing I can do about it. That's why I can't uh oh. What <laughs> insanity is about to happen here? <laughs> Vampire fight. The fight scenes in this movie are so weird. Oh! Oh! Good job, Stu! Is he? That his heart's on the wrong side. This way. Werewolves. Oh, are we fighting with the werewolves again? Well, why weren't they at the party? Blood on them, so. Your legs expand. They grow into the tracksuit. <laughs> I, I I like the idea of a werewolf being an occupational therapist. <laughs> Stu was like, can I can my life not be in danger for one night? Oh my god! Go 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 run! They will outrun us. <laughs> oh, 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 someone fell. Can't y'all fly? Can't y'all fly? <laughs> Grab Stu! Fly! Oh well, I guess the cameraman can't fly. The crucifixes don't protect you from the werewolf. Maybe we should have given them some silver, too. Throw the locket at them! No, Stu's dead. Oh, poor Stu. I like Stu! Aww. Stu was the main character! Why didn't we kill our main character? Probably still a little upset having seen his best friend disemboweled by werewolves. Werewolves wearing really, really bad wolf suits. Hey, but at least Deacon and Nick can find some common ground now. But this is what happens when you're a vampire. You have to watch everyone die. Your mother and father, all your friends. Sometimes brutal, but even old age is brutal. Ooh, that's a hell of a line. This was probably the way he wanted to go. I don't think so. I hope I made you feel better. No. He looks at the camera. Dangerous dogs out on the streets, not being looked after. This is not good. No, not good at all. Oh. Hey, he's not in a good. He's not in a good place. So he's torturing the again. Empire's hearts are cold and dead. Definitely dead. By still. He would have loved this scarf. He's a lovely loose knit. I can't do loose knit. <laughs> It's okay. Aww. Night night. Okay. And the sweater. <laughs> They're all so broken up about Stu. Aww. 
Aww. I like how Stu is so red. <laughs> that's funny. Alright. Whoa! Aww! Look at his face. I saw them tear you to shreds. He's not uh, doing great though. Oh, he's a werewolf now. Okay. Oh, okay, good. But now they're mortal enemies. But maybe, maybe they can find common ground now. Damn, they went for the full ball shot. Alright. <laughs> Reenact. <laughs> But now Stu can be the werewolf vampire ambassador! Did you knit your own jersey? Yes. Oh, yeah. I knit. Uh, is that the moon or...? Yes. Hopefully we won't, you know... <laughs> <laughs> See? See, now we've all found common ground. I that werewolf smell which permeated the entire house for the first half an hour, but we opened some windows and got rid of that. They buy him a tower fan! They'll be okay, like an air purifier. It'll be alright. That's ludicrous. But I thought, well, we'll give it a shot. You know, I mean, I'm the alpha male, so I made the call. Uh, I think more you're their uh, walk-in therapist. ...by some werewolves. Oh, I met a werewolf. Seemed a very nice person. So, Captain <gasps> the Vampire... Oh, cute! Uh, they think, what's this 96-year-old lady doing with a guy four times her age? <laughs> I knew someone was going to say that. Age is just a number. <laughs> okay, that last bit was very good. Okay, that was that that was cute. I, I do love me a good dark comedy. I'll admit this movie was a little tricky to react to. It's not normally my standard fare, but this still was a really good movie and I can understand why everybody found it charming, but I can also understand after watching the movie why it works better as a TV show. The movie itself had some jokes that really fell flat. I understand why it's more of a cult classic and why it wasn't super popular specifically in New Zealand. In New Zealand, it was absolutely a box office flop. Death, specifically in dark comedy, can be really hit or miss. One of the things about death is that it's permanent. And one of the things about dark humor is that you can either make it permanent or make it cheap. And this kind of did both, because regardless of whether or not Stu actually healed, they did have to mourn him. Regardless of whether they talk about their friends in the past tense, they still mourn for them. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how long you live, grief is just a part of the process. It's, it is something that we're all going to have to go through regardless of what we're grieving. It could be grieving time, a way of life, like Nick had to grieve his way of life, moving on from being a human to a vampire. He had to grieve the relationship with his friends, grieve the loss of his favorite food. It's ugly and it hurts, but it is a part of being alive, just like happiness, just like boredom and love. I, I understand why it's called what we do in the shadows now. And it's not just because, you know, they're vampires and they have to be in the darkness and all of this takes place at night. There is a trope that is often called who you are in the dark, which means what do you do when you're alone and nobody can see you? You can have an image of yourself that you present to the world. Vampires are these dark, suave, debonair beasts that hypnotize you and drink your blood and you think of them one way, but when this camera comes into their house and sees their most private moments, they're clearly murderous dorks. So what do you do when you are in the dark? That's what this movie is asking you. Some of the vampires had hobbies. For instance, Deacon would knit. Some of the vampires have some relationship drama and it seems to some people that they handle in one way, but they really handle it another and they kind of mope and obsess. That was Vlad with the beast, you know. In the dark, they can appear to be, you know, flighty and dandy one minute, but in reality, they're quite 
devoted, which was Viago and Catherine. And that's actually quite brilliant once you think about it. I do have some complaints about it. The low budget, I really don't give a shit about, but there are some moments where it was like, what the fuck? The jokes fell incredibly flat and it just either went over my head or I was like, mm, uh, okay. But the highs were really high. When you really start thinking about this movie, it is actually quite brilliant. And that's one of the best things about Taika Waititi movies, right? Is that they appear comedic and simple, especially in this movie where you have some of the most prolific monsters known to man vampires, the night hunters, the impalers, the most brutal form of sin imaginable. Despite this, they still have feelings. They still mourn, like they mourn for Peter and they mourned for Stu. They still love and they still have emotions and they still have hobbies. There's one thing you have to understand about bad people is that they still live like human beings. They still have people they love. They still have emotions. They still mourn. A, a lot of people often wonder, how could someone so evil create something so beautiful? Easy. People do it all the time. Being able to create something and being able to love is not something that is reserved specifically for good people. That is a constant theme in each of Taika Waititi's movies, that just because a person can love, just because a person can create, just because they have managed to claw themselves up from the bottom, it does not mean that they are a good or nice person. And what they do with what they've created is how you should judge them, not the fact that they they have created at all. The worst person you know is still a person. I think that is just a life lesson that everyone needs to keep in mind. Even the worst person you know, the biggest monster you know, is still a person. What I also meant to say is because they are people, that means anybody is capable of anything. Every person is capable of just as much evil as they are good. And for some reason, I couldn't just freaking say that. Sometimes you just have to acknowledge the fact that you share that with each other and move on. The, this is this is a movie that when you watch it, you're like, what the fuck? But then when you think about it, you're like, oh, oh, okay, I get it now. And I have noticed that as Taika Waititi's filmography keeps growing, his ability to make films that encapsulate that message only gets better over time. I mean, maybe if he can work with Ari Aster a little bit, maybe they could talk about Bo is Afraid, may, uh, you know? But uh, regardless, yeah, this is definitely a movie that gets better the more you think about it. So with that being being said, please like if you like this video. Please subscribe if you really like this video and would like to see more. If you really, really like me, you can find me on Patreon where you can support the channel and I post full uncut reactions the day before they go up on YouTube. So if I post on Friday, you'll see it on Thursday and the rare occasion I post on Wednesday, you'll see it on Tuesday. Nirvana and Fire, my Patreon only reaction series should be up on Patreon this Saturday. Not the Saturday after that, but then the next Saturday. You can find me on any piece to social media, Tumblr, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, but mostly Tumblr because it sucks. It all sucks. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Stay weird, lovelies, and happy eating.